<laughs> I've been here for almost two months now and at last we've got stunning, gorgeous August weather. And it is remarkably beautiful and contained here. It's this, it must be, it must be a Victorian garden, um, woodland that was they, they brought in this this beautiful sequoia tree that stands guard by the gate and Douglas firs and tons of rhododendrons and it's all uh, it's not neat at all it's really wild and um, goes up through the woodland on this steep hill from pond to pond to pond on different levels and this this spring water comes down off the the hillside and feeds the ponds and feeds the caravan and um, it's just absolutely stunning and I can't get over the range of sounds in the background. You know I had, if you've been following me, you know that I had a complete love affair with with the valley, the secluded valley that my yurt was in over the winter which was down there, like a five minute walk. And here I can't see much of the valley because I'm so surrounded by trees and I'm here for the foreseeable future. But what hit me the other day was that all my life, all my life since I was about 10 years old, I have wanted to find C.S. Lewis's Narnia. You know that incredible magical land that these four children found by walking through a wardrobe and finding their way past fur coats and into this land initially that was perpetually winter and all the animals there could could communicate with the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve as people humans were called and and my dad told me that I had too much imagination that Narnia didn't exist and I think for the last five decades of my life I've had this underlying disappointment that life can never be as rich and magical as I had hoped. But since being here I've had some interesting experiences. I have a uh, visitations from a tree spirit and the energy is completely tangible to me and I'm not that I'm not that sensitive but but I can feel the tree spirit when she's around and I think I've seen glimpses of like fairy lights not candle lights but real fairy lights and yesterday while I was trampolining there was this incredible color that emerged that was a this turquoisey blue glow that emanated over leaves and painted the tree trunks this incredible blue and even the ground now none of those things are remotely blue and and it happened while I was bouncing on the trampoline and might have been related to the to the movement I, I don't know I've never experienced that before but it suddenly became clear. I found Narnia and I am beginning to open those wardrobe doors, those portals into this incredibly magical realm. And um, yeah, I've got this idea that, you know, our brains create DMT naturally, but it only gives us visions and and these sort of psychedelic journeys which which give us understandings of, of the world in a totally different way when we trigger it with something like ayahuasca. Um, but I don't believe that nature would create DMT in our brains without also making it completely accessible, without having to find some external source. And um, so that's the principle that I'm working on, that when we find the way to trigger the DMT in our brains, just 
without anything external, then we experience the narnia, what I would call narnia, but this magical, profound depth of life where we really do experience ourselves as an intrinsic part of this incredible web. I'll keep you posted. Bye for now.